um, this is courtesy of Bloody Elbow. <clears throat> It says, why Sean O'Malley will never likely make Conor McGregor money, which is really upsetting, to be fair. I'm not going to lie, because as great as it was to live in the Conor McGregor era, sports moves on, and it is quite cool to see the new breed of, you know, superstars propping up the UFC and shit and making a name for themselves. And it's fun to see somebody else have that journey. And the fact that this headline exists, and these guys from Bloody Elbow probably know way more about me, way more than me about the sport, it's kind of depressing that we're not going to see that level of superstardom and money-making from Sean O'Malley, even though he's got the potential to be that guy again. It's really obscene. Um, so let's read the article because it kind of breaks down why that is the case. Um, Sean, <clears throat> Sean O'Malley walked out of the Lupe Fiasco superstar and by all accounts, he fits the bill to be uh, to a T. He's bout against Aljamain Sterling, set records uh, just by virtue of his being there. How do we know that? Because Dana said so. Yet despite his star power and despite the record setting, he likely won't ever make the fabled McGregor money once referred to as Anderson Silver money, even if he were to land the box match against Javante Davis. In the latest um, episode of Hey Not Face, John Nash discussed the fact that present major roadblocks to Sean O'Malley's ascension. Our main topics were um, well, Sean O'Malley, no points for you. Uh, what, what is it here? Does it say it here? Yeah, there we go. Uh, what does it say? <clears throat> so, yeah, so, so, <clears throat> um, so. Um, at his post-fight press conference, Dana White stated that the UFC 292 broke the bantamweight attendance records and it was the sugar show that cut the, the um, catapulted them into the prime position. In the week leading to the event, Bloody Elbow staff know that O'Malley trended much higher than Sterling to the tune of 20 times greater on the impact of Google Trends. <clears throat> Bearing that in mind, I wonder, did Burt Kreischer make Google Trends a thing? Because I never heard of Google Trends until Burt Kreischer kept fucking talking about it. Burt Kreischer probably should get a little bit of money, you know, in an envelope because of how he popularized the, you know, checking of Google Trends and shit. Anyway, continuing. Bearing in mind that most would assume that the sky's the limit for the needle mover like Sean, but they'd be wrong. First, we won't, he won't um, get a penny off the pay-per-view. Insane only champions get pay-per-view points cool even there not all champions make them conor mcgregor nate diaz and a very small handful of others that weren't belt holders at the time have made points in the past but those were exceptional examples sean will make decent money by bantamweight standards to, for his card he might have had his um he might have had what's called a side letter, which is a letter of agreement that pays him extra on top of his contracted purse, so he's easily going to be well. He's, go he's easily going to be the well paid compared to other UFC fighters. According to Nash, this fight is a perfect example of what the antitrust lawsuit is about. Here you have a fight between two athletes that obviously added much more value to the standard UFC contest. Why? Because they sold more pay-per-views. They did a bigger gate. There was more interest. That's what's called a marginal revenue product. Theoretically, um, because they're the people adding the value, they should get the vast majority of the MRP, but they're getting very little. They added probably tens of millions of dollars to the event revenue. And when it's all said and done, they'll get a very small percentage of that. And that, of course, is absolutely obscene. They're so fucking greedy, the UFC. It's fucking crazy. Um, the first call out Sean O'Malley made after winning the belt was the boxing superstar, Javante Davis. Why would he make that call out? Because he almost assuredly knows he will never be making the kind of money a bout like that would generate inside the UFC. Sean knows. Um, Sean seems to have a keen business sense and makes the use of his considerable reach. He certainly knows how to keep the media talking about him. Um, the answer to our main query is no. When McGregor fought Mayweather, it was a light in a bottle connor was at peak popularity floyd was still fairly fresh in his retirement with less than two years separating his bout with andre berto with the one with mcgregor mayweather was still in his money making prime and as the bout ended in expanding his fortune by a report of 300 million and connor 130 yo connor made 130 million off that fucking floyd fight this explains everything this explains everything i think if i made 130 million off of fighting Floyd, I'd probably be buying all the eight balls in the world and drinking all the fucking, you know, um, whiskeys in the world also. He made $130 million from that Floyd, Floyd remember the fight, not including what he makes, you know, day to day from fucking proper 12 and all these other business ventures. Business ventures. Fucking hell. The gate in excess of 75 million and the pay-per-view buy rates were... 
the second highest of an all-time 4.5 million, 4.3 million, sorry. Conor McGregor also had an entire country behind him. Sean O'Malley does not. It was a perfect storm to produce the elusive lightning in the bottle effect. By comparison, David just had the biggest fight when he fought um, and when he bested Ryan Garcia. The contest drew great numbers, reportedly netted both men 30 million each. That event sold 1.12 pay-per-views and had a 22 million gate and a significant downgrade for the numbers of Merriver and McGregor. John estimates that the 71st bit would be a magic number. Then we have to figure in co the then we have to figure in co -pro co promotion because the UFC would act as a co promoter, thus extract a fee at least fifty percent or even more since Sugar isn't even in a sweet spot for deal making as Connor was in twenty seventeen. While Nash thinks O'Malley would make a nice payday from a fight with either boxer, he reckons it could end up coming under the eight figures once the UFC gets their cut. Mamma mia. And then uh why is my why is your hand in my wallet? This is probably the, the worst one of it, right? Sean said earlier this year that he wanted to open a cannabis dispensary or chain of them to begin the business empire to rival or eclipse that of Conor McGregor. Smart idea. But that may be a major drawback thanks to the slight change in the latest UFC contracts that allow the company to take a piece of any business venture on the fighters roster launches or the, the, the sorry on on their roster launches on their fire can you imagine that let's read that one more time but the they have a, so he wants to order the, open a dispensary and it says here there's a slick change in ufc contracts that can allow the company to take a piece of any business venture a fighter on their roster launches so essentially dana white has somehow managed to finagle a 360 deal for fighters <laughs> You know, musicians are in 360 deals where essentially the label loans them money, fronts them money, but then they take a percentage of everything they make from the record sales to the merch to the live shows. They essentially own them for a very, very long time. So Dana basically created a 360 deal for UFC fighters. Yo, that guy's a fucking scumbag. Like legit scumbag. Like he is Scrooge McDuck to the nth degree. He's fucking like the worst of the worst, which is why it makes me really giggle when I think about Brendan and why he keeps trying to like, you know, ingrati ingratiate himself back into Dana White's good graces. Dana White is a piece of shit in my personal opinion, horrible type of dude, the way he treats the UFC fighters. But then on top of that, he's also somebody that seems very, very, very vindictive and very bitter. When he hates you, you're dead right so i could never understand in my head why brendan thinks him and dana could ever be friends again dana is the kind of guy that has grudges on his own fighters in the ufc he he didn't fucking like he doesn't like some fighters in the ufc like look what happened with fucking francis and garner francis garner is a saint of a guy he tries to besmirch and badmouth him in public even wonder boy he tries to besmirch and you know badmouth him in public and wonder boy is a fucking saint he's a fucking super christian dude really nice always polite barely swears right a saint of a human the kind of guy that most men would want their fucking sister to date if he was young and he treats him like shit. Why does fucking Brendan think he could ever get Dana to like him again after everything that's gone on? It's never going to happen, which makes me fucking laugh. But this is fucking crazy how they basically did this. They inserted this fucking thing, right? Um, and I guess this is fucking the law here or the, the, the stipulation in the contract. <clears throat> so it says Zufa shall own in perpetuity UFC content <laughs> this contract is crazy you, Zufa shall own in perpetuity UFC content and all the rights products and, pro and proceeds in and to or the right from the use um, of other disposition of the UFC content and shall um, have the right to do all things necessary for the full and complete exploitation and exercise of the UFC content, including without limitation to secure in the name of Zufa copyright of other protection to the fullest extent available in the United States and other countries of the world where such protection is available. Yo, this 360 deal covers the world. <laughs> Dana is a fucking piece of shit. Oh my god. Fighter irrevocably agrees that all copyrightable material notes, um, notes, records, drawings, designs, inventions, 
inventions if you figure out a fucking new glove design that makes you money if you figure out a new fucking jock strap design a new cup design sorry a new strap fucking you know um ingredients or whatever sticky tape whatever it fucking may be called they can own that too inventions improvements developments discoveries and trade secrets um conceived made or discovered by a fighter solely or in collaboration with others during the term that fighter became associated with the course of the fight's performance under this agreement and the use um the ufc brand marks and trademarks collectively quote-unquote work product are the sole property of zufa in perpetuity fighter further shall irrevocably assign or cause to be assigned and does hereby assign fully to zufa all work product and any copyrights patents <laughs> work mask work rights or other intellectual property rights relating their 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 to imperpetuity yo this is one of the most scrooge mcduck's greedy i'm gonna own your fucking life i own your asshole i own your fucking family i own your mother i own your socks like contract i've ever seen in my entire life that is fucking crazy <laughs> anyway <laughs> um it says here nash um let's say sean o'malley starts his own dispensary or some other ventures a munchie store that sells a ton but the ufc cut themselves in on the deal and gets a lot of percentages of it so it's no longer just him making all the money he has to give up a portion of it to the ufc which is pretty amazing if that does happen it's also amazing that the ufc can pay him so little for how much he's drawing because the agreement the ufc makes and the fans will make is that the ufc made this guy a star that's why they deserve a cut of everything he does because they're the ones who gave him the platform about which he never would have been a star but i think sugar sean developed his own persona exactly the ufc don't do much for people to be honest you have to kind of do it yourself that's why everybody basically turns into a wwe fighter in the ufc even if they're not that guy because the only way they're gonna fucking get any kind of attention who's the dude the American dude that fucking Jorge Masvidal hates. That's why he invented that fucking persona of being MAGA and being fucking pro-Trump and all this sort of shit because he wasn't getting any juice just being a kind of cool, humble, chill guy. He had to be a heel and then suddenly he blows up and kind of gets all the money. Colby, that's it, Colby Covington. Like, it's awful. Like, don't get me wrong, he's really good at playing that role and he's clearly got a talent for it. But not all fighters should have to fucking do WWE Triple H shit to get money. Anyway continues but i think sugar sean developed his own persona he's the one that is out there building himself up as this person right it's not the ufc marketing team that did this of course all the ufc did is offer him the chance to fight the best fighters because they have the best fighters locked up under contract exactly again we go back to the end antitrust lawsuit because the ufc had control of these specific assets they can dictate terms where sugar sean has to give up so much even though he's the one doing it all his performances in the cage and his personality outside of it is what made him a star it's fucking exactly in my opinion right if to to cut brendan to, to cut dana white some slack if you wanted to be greedy and keep all the money here's what you could do also you could say to people here here's a contract right we're gonna take a cut of everything that you do within the ufc you we take a cut of it but everything you do outside the ufc is yours they could easily do that. We're not going to pay you a base salary. You only pay, you only get paid for how, who you fight. So what's that term? What's that thing Brennan says? Or people say, um, uh, you eat what you hunt. What? You hunt what you eat. Whatever that, however that term is said. So if you fight, then you get paid. Cool. So you do that. And then, but then you also allow people the opportunity to make as much money as they can outside of the, outside of the UFC and not take a cunt. And not take a cunt. Sorry, not take a cut. That would be fair. If they wanted to be super greedy, that would also work. But they don't want to do that. They want to do everything. They want to take a cut of your fucking... They want to take a cut of your fuck. They don't want to pay you accurately based on the amount of interest and buys and gates and whatever attention you're going to bring to the fucking card itself. They don't give you pay-per-view pay points. They don't pay you a base salary. And then they take money out of the things that you do outside of the fucking UFC. Pff, fucking mind blown. And again... If this happened in comedy, if this happened in stand-up, Rogan would be spitting feathers. If he heard that, you know, certain comedy clubs were taking a percentage of comedians' fucking merch sales, right? Like Mark Norman was going to fucking the Laugh Factory and selling his fucking comedy t-shirts. And they were like, yeah, cool. You sold 10, now give us half. 
Rogan would be spitting feathers. He'd be talking about this ad nauseum, right? He would not have it. But in the UFC, he buries his head in the sand, which is quite crazy when you think about it because he's a lifelong martial artist. You'd think he'd be in favor of the martial artists and the practitioners of the sport because he was, you know, a former fucking, was it, Muay Thai champion, whatever he, he was back in the day, jiu-jitsu black belt. Instead, he's with the money men fucking crazy man dana white is a horrible person like really is a horrible horrible guy <laughs> a 360 deal for fighters is fucking insane but what can we do you know i can shout and scream about it but these guys who can actually kill people with their bare hands they don't seem to care so i don't need to get that bothered about it really do you know i mean it's hard to get annoyed for people who don't really want to you know fix the issue um but yeah what can you do so um what are you guys saying in the chat here about me you're saying eat what you kill thank you for letting me know that thank you um gino nate is too yeah eat what you watch eat yeah eat what you kill be so colby white so colbington white um tell me no what are you guys saying in the chat here colby is dana's son bro that's his conspiracy true uh robert mina said soft-spoken and non-english speaking fighters get fucked over probably i don't really too sure dana be like that dana's been like that since the beginning though his whole thing is bashing fighters yeah i don't like it though it's not excusable i just don't think being a cunt from the beginning excuse you from still being a cunt i just think it's it's just not fair there's there's so many things they could do again think about everything i've said even if they want to be a cunt across the whole board and just say the only way you can make extra money in ufc is if you get your short sponsored. It would then put the incentive on fighters to go out and secure sponsorships for their shorts and put sponsors on them, right? They can add, they'll act like their own sales guys. Cool. Then take them, split split their money, whatever you want to do. But they don't even let them have, they don't even make, they don't even make money from the fucking sponsors that are in the fucking cage. They don't, they don't see none of that income. When Burt's fucking face is all over the fucking octagon and shit, they don't see any of that fucking cash, allegedly. The fucking whole fucking octagon is covered in fucking logos. They see none of that money. <laughs> All they do is get free fucking trainers and kits and shit. Crazy. Um, this is so wide sweeping and outstanding. Court of challenge is so too crazy. Yeah, space. Hopefully, because that is a crazy 360 deal. Like inventions. Imagine you could invent a new glove, a glove that maybe prevents fighters from eye poking each other right because it doesn't let your hands kind of like splay out too much something along those kind of lines you could invent some forward thinking glove something along those kind of lines a new type of underwear or whatever right a new type of fucking knee strap whatever and they could legitimately take a cut of that <laughs> do you know how obscene that is fuck um 